In this video, we will demonstrate how to perform an abdominocentesis in a horse. Analysis of abdominal fluid can be useful in horses presenting with acute or recurrent abdominal pain, unexplained weight loss, unexplained fever, or other abdominal cavity conditions. This procedure can be performed in a clinic or in a field setting. The procedure itself is minimally invasive and simple to perform with just a little bit of practice. When presented with a horse showing signs of colic, the questions of whether it will resolve with medical management or require more intensive hospital care is often top of the mind. When added to the standard colic workup of physical examination, nasogastric intubation, and rectal palpation, abdominocentesis can provide a very useful additional piece of the puzzle to complete the clinical picture and guide treatment or referral decisions. Materials needed for abdominocentesis include exam gloves, scrub and alcohol, clippers, sterile gloves, vacutainer tubes for sample collection, including a red top and a purple top tube. The procedure can be performed one of two ways, either using a needle, in which case an 18 gauge inch and a half needle should be used. Alternatively, a tea cannula can be used, in which case one to two milliliters of lidocaine, a 15 blade, a tea cannula and sterile gauze will also be needed. The patient should be restrained with sedation, plus or minus a twitch, depending on patient compliance. The location for an abdominocentesis is the most dependent part of the abdomen between the xiphoid and the umbilicus, usually a hands width caudal to the point of the xiphoid. We choose an area approximately a hands width to the right of midline to avoid inadvertent puncture of the spleen, which typically sits on the left side of the abdomen and crosses ventral midline towards the right. If an ultrasound is available, it can be used to identify a suitable location with free fluid that is free of large bowel or spleen. However, abdominocentesis can still be successful if no fluid is noted. In this area, we will clip a 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter square and aseptically prepare it. First, we'll talk about abdominocentesis using a teat cannula. When preparing for and performing abdominocentesis, it is important to stand in a safe location. Note that the veterinarian is near the horse's shoulder with her head and shoulders raised as some horses may kick forward with a hind limb. It may be necessary to squat while obtaining the sample, but kneeling or positioning yourself near the hind legs is strongly discouraged. One to two milliliters of 2% lidocaine should be administered at the site of the abdominocentesis. Half of this volume should be used as a skin bleb and the needle redirected perpendicularly to desensitize the external rectus sheath. Once the area has been blocked, an aseptic preparation is repeated. Local anesthetic is not necessary if only an 18 gauge needle is going to be used for the abdominocentesis. Once the site of the abdominocentesis is aseptically prepared and blocked, the sterile gloves can be opened and the materials can be deposited on your sterile field. The collection tube should have caps removed and can either be held by an assistant or with the collector's non-dominant, non-sterile hand. The deep cannula can be placed through a gauze square to catch peripheral blood from small vessels on the body wall and prevent blood contamination of the sample. The blade is used to make a stab incision into the skin at the center of the lidocaine block. The blade is inserted until the end of the cutting edge so that it nicks the external rectus sheath. It is then rotated 180 degrees to clear a large enough pathway for the teat cannula. The blade is removed and the teat cannula should be quickly placed into the hole from the blade. The cannula should be advanced to the hub. There will be a mild amount of resistance as the cannula penetrates the peritoneum. Abdominal fluid should then flow freely out of the cannula into the collection tubes. You may have to rotate your teat cannula to allow fluid to flow. If only a small volume of fluid was obtained, the collection tube should be held below the teat cannula or needle as it is withdrawn to catch any fluid remaining within the lumen. Once the cannula is removed, a gauze square can be used to hold pressure at the site of the abdominocentesis. Next, we'll talk about using an 18 gauge needle for abdominocentesis. Reasons aside from practitioner preference that you may choose to do this would be the temperament of a horse, having less people available, a really painful patient, 
or in folds. The steps for clipping and aseptic preparation are the same, except for blocking the skin is generally unnecessary. The needle is inserted in the center of the aseptically prepared square and advanced until fluid flows freely into the collection tubes. Needle abdominocentesis tends to be less successful in large patients with significant body fat. If fluid collection is unsuccessful with a needle technique, consider switching to a teak cannula, as the longer size of the cannula may allow for better penetration of the body wall. It is not recommended to use a longer needle. You may have to spin the needle, as with the teak cannula technique, to allow for free flowing of the fluid. In dehydrated patients, it is not uncommon to be unsuccessful in obtaining fluid, regardless of the technique used or practitioner experience. Abdominal fluid collected from a normal horse should be clear and pale yellow. The visual appearance of the fluid can be very helpful in determining the problem affecting the abdominal cavity. Serosanguinous fluid, which is orange to red in color and translucent, is typically indicative of ischemic bowel. Opaque fluid is typically indicative of high cellularity as seen with peritonitis cases. A green or brown fluid, especially paired with a foul odor or particulate matter, is an indication of GI contents, consistent with either intestinal rupture or enterocentesis. If suspected GI contents are obtained, a second abdominocentesis should be performed at a different site to confirm GI rupture. Lactate can be readily measured with a handheld lactometer and is arguably the most useful value in an ambulatory setting. A normal horse has a systemic lactate of less than two millimoles per liter. Abdominal fluid should be within two points of the systemic lactate values. The total protein of abdominal fluid is less than two grams per deciliter, and the total nucleated cell count is typically less than 500 cells per microliter. The following are general guidelines that we use clinically. When deciding on medical versus surgical treatment of a patient, the two most useful abdominal fluid parameters are the color and the lactate. A peritoneal lactate that is greater than two points above the peripheral lactate is suggestive of ischemic bowel. A total protein of greater than four grams per deciliter and a nucleated cell count of over 5,000 supports a diagnosis of peritonitis. When GI contents are obtained, the presence of intracellular bacteria on cytology is supportive of intestinal rupture. Bloody abdominal fluid can be obtained for a few different reasons. It is helpful to spin the fluid down either in the vacutainer tube or in hematocrit tubes to obtain a PCV. Blood contamination from either the stab incision or ischemic intestine will result in a small pellet of blood cells at the bottom of the tube, or a PCV of less than 5%. In a true hemoabdomen, the PCV of abdominal fluid will be within approximately 10% of the patient's systemic PCV. Inadvertent splenic puncture will yield a fluid with a PCV greater than the systemic PCV, often 60% or more. Potential complications of abdominocentesis include not obtaining fluid, which is most common in dehydrated patients, enterocentesis, or puncture of the spleen. Splenic puncture is typically inconsequential. When enterocentesis occurs, the needle or cannula should be withdrawn quickly to avoid lacerating the intestine. While a small puncture seals over relatively quickly, patients do develop a local peritonitis and systemic antibiotic administration should be considered. Thank you for listening. Hopefully this video has made you more comfortable with obtaining and interpreting abdominal fluid in equine patients.